Greeting Earthlings! If you follow the channel, you know that we had a jolly good time opening up an analog clock that flew with the Soyuz and many other Russian spacecrafts. We got it back to life and fed it ultra-precision time pulses derived from an atomic time source coming out of a large pile of HP equipment. Before we return the clock to its owner, Steve Jurvetson, I wanted to build a box that combines all the driver electronics so that Steve can use and demonstrate his repaired clock. The clock needs a pretty beefy source of 28 volt power, and the company IC Station sponsored this episode by donating a neat 100 watt boost converter, which I'll also review. So we are going to bring back the uh, uh, Soyuz clock to its owner, Steve Jervison, and I wanted to make him a little present and bring it back with a driver so he can demonstrate the clock to his friends. And I made two versions of it. One is kind of the modern way with an Atmel, an AT tiny 2113 chip. And the other one's the old way with uh, just a TTL divider chain. And we'll see how they work and pick one of the two to put in the final design. So in this case it's a very simple circuit so I didn't need much preparation. The only thing I doodle here is the uh, MOSFET amplifier. So I need to make a simple pulser that has 2 Hz pulses at 50 to 100 milliseconds length. And then I need to amplify that so it can drive the magnet at 28 volts. So I just use a little MOSFET transistor. Uh, I also decided to put the three buttons for the chronometer and a little sound generator for the alarm clock. And uh, that's, the, that's the amount of my research, making sure I know the pinout of the clock and those were the diagrams for hooking up the divide, the dual divide by 10 TTL chips, they're a little bit tricky. And those are simple enough that you don't really need any design. So all you need to do is give him some positive voltage, negative voltage, put a quartz in his two caps and that's it. And the signal comes out on the yellow wire. And that's my little uh, MOSFET amplifier and there are three buttons for the chronometer, and that's about it. And for the TTL version, it's very straightforward. It's a crystal oscillator at 2 MHz, and then 3 divide by 100, and so they are the 74 LS390s, the same chips that's used in my uh, Noodle Logic for the RAM refresh of the HP9825. So I just reuse that uh, and then you do a chain and then at the end you have your short pulses, they, code, they go to the same amplifier design. And in terms of, of difficulty, they are really strictly equivalent. This one is very straightforward, you just look at it and you know what it's doing. Uh, this one has less hardware to it, but you have the, the, the software issues, I must have hit three or four bugs in the Eclipse IDE that wouldn't work anymore and the driver to flash them that wouldn't work anymore and uh, it's just a whole misery but the code is very simple obviously it's just to make simple pulses and I made this magnificent cable that goes from the Russian Soviet connectors to just a, an Ethernet that's made out of a, of a Cat5 cable obviously The next issue was how to power them up uh, because this clock uh, is driven out of 28 volts and it needs quite a bit of amperage, not that much for the regular clock but the electromagnet that drives this button here for the chronometer stopped, reset. It needs several amps, it really pulls on the supply. As I was looking for a boost converter the company IC Station offered to send me one for review. It's just the right power, appears much better built than the ultra cheap ones on eBay, and is less than $6. They also sent me an equally excellent 5 volt buck converter, which I'll use for powering the logic section. And here they are, and that's the 28 volts. So now I have to remember 28 volts goes here, and that is the 5 volts here. And I put 12 volts in. Uh, this is 100 watts, but only if you power it out of 12 volts. Uh, you can power it out of 5 volts, but then you have much less uh, current on the output. So let's see if that works. Yeah, it sure does. So look at that. It even tells you what the 
output is here and you can choose to read the input voltage or the output voltage and it definitely can take the oomph for activating the solenoid so this is chronometer start chronometer stop chronometer reset all right since i have been a sponsor to the tune of 12 dollars i thought i would do my 12 dollar work and actually check if that uh, little supply can actually do the 100 watt it was supposed to do uh, and so I, here I have a 12 volt power supply. Uh, they say that you need at least 12 volt to achieve 100 watts. Here I have my electronic load currently at zero. I, I put uh, a meter on here to uh, get the actual current. Uh, the voltage, uh, we can reasonably read it over here, it's pretty accurate. Uh, and here we read the voltage on uh, the supply here. So let's get it to two amps. So that's 50 watts or a little bit more oh here we go so that we jumped here over to uh, almost 5 amps here we have 1.9 amps uh, power supply is starting to feel it um, and this guy is still at 28 volts pretty good so we have let's call it 5 amps 5 enter 11.6 volts we have 58 watts and at the output we have 27.9 and the thing just it was 1.9 right enter 1.91 times 53 watts so 92 percent efficient and starting to warm up a little bit but nothing bad so now let's go to current 3.2 enter yeah that's that's about it 3.2 uh so it's at uh, it's at nine amps this thing quit also that's close to 100 watts here it's starting to feel it and actually my cabling is not that great so i should take the voltage i read over here so i'm starting to lose quite a bit 10.8 so I have 97.2 watts in and I have 87 uh, watts at the output. Uh, that's not too bad in 89.5, uh, let's call it 90% efficiency. Uh, but you can see it's starting to run away. The current has grown to 9.5 amps, it's going to, to, to 10 amps pretty soon. Um, so the worry here is that yeah it did 100 watts but yeah this is going to this is starting to be really hot which i'm not too worried about it's silicon underneath but the big problem is the cap here oops i'm going to turn it off the cap's not going to make it the cap's burning uh so yeah it did 100 watts for a little bit but no i wouldn't run it at more than uh, 50 watts and uh, normal usage so if you want to run it for uh, at 100 watts you need to blow on it and you definitely that cap won't make it you need to put a, a better quality cap it's just totally burning so it just the the internal resistance is way too high on that one uh, but yeah thank you ic station uh, your little gadget works pretty well uh, I'm, I'm super happy with it now the TTL version of the circuit is an amusing circuit. Actually, it makes too much noise. Let's turn the clock off. In that you can follow exactly what it does. So the uh, LS390 is a divide, uh, is two divide by 10. So it's a divide by 100. But as you know, divide by 10 is uh, not a symmetric thing in binary. So it's actually made by a divide by two and then a divide by five and depending whether you put the divide by two before the divide by five you have a bcd counter if you put the divide by five before the divide by two you got a biquinary counter so here is my oscillator and i am on the first stage and then if you look at it you see exactly the function table of the biquinary counter here so my input here is at 2 megahertz and the first output of the biquinary counter is this 
not quite symmetric uh, function, but you can see um, this is actually what it should be. It should be low, high, low, high, low, low, high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low, high. And then the next one is actually not quite symmetric either. It's three lows and two high. And then finally, uh, the last one is a bunch of lows and just one high. So it's even more asymmetric. So that's a divide by five. So it gets up from two megahertz all the way down to uh, 400 kilohertz. And then I feed it to the divide by two. So if I get myself after the divide by two over here, I should get a nice squarish waveform. And you can see it's a nice square wave and it's now uh, a, a tenth of the input is 200 kilohertz. And then I go on the other side of the circuit, I divide another times by 10. This is 20 kilohertz. Then I go to the other side of the circuit and I should now be another divide by 10. And this is 200 hertz. And then I go over here and I'm now 20 hertz. And in the last circuit, I use it in BCD count. So I have the uh, divide by two first and the uh, quinary part afterwards. So it gives me nice and short pulses. I take this as an advantage that it's not symmetric. So here you go. This is what feeds the amplifier and uh, turns on the clock. And once you're done with the prototype, well, I'll just take one of those little boards from Adafruits and they are the kind of a perma proto. It just not worth it to make a PCB for a one-off, so I'll, I'll just solder that design onto this board and this one onto this board. Um, and I think I'll just, since they are equivalent, I'll, I'll use this one. It takes less space. If I w were to put it in a transparent case, I would probably uh, use this design because it's so beautiful. You can explain what it does. But in, in this case, it's uh, going to be hidden, so I think I'm going to use this design. And I also want to add one more thing, which is the alarm sound. And I found this little cute board for generating sounds from Adafruit. So I added the last piece, which is the sound board for the alarm. We'll see how that works. Right, my boards are now soldered on perma protos. Yeah, it looks like it just popped from the computer into reality. All right, it's all in the box. And as usual, most of the work in projects like these are not the electronics, they are the, the mechanicals and putting it all in a, a, a box and with the buttons that work, uh, making all the holes. And here you have it. You can demonstrate your clock. And you have the control of the chronometer. The start. And the chronometer goes. And as you expect, stop, reset. And here you can choose whatever sound you want for the alarm. All right, I think my gift is ready. See you in the next episode where we'll get to present it to Steve and have a peek at his amazing collection.